It is great to be here in Washington, D.C. This is strategic. We are right next to the White House. That is strategic, and the Capitol. There's a reason for that. What I'm going to share with you is not politically correct. And what I have brought here is the shofar, and this is not politically correct, because this is a symbol of God's power, and a symbol that God is the king of all the earth, and that when he says, it shall fall, it falls, and when he says it shall rise, it rises. At this sound, the walls of Jericho fell. And so here we are in the capital, which represents so much power of man, but I just felt at the last minute, really, that we're going to sound this here to declare that the power of God in this nation. And before I start, just a note, and I came here with only one copy, so I was going to lift this up and tell you this is what you can't get tonight. But as I came here, this is the Harbinger, and of course, uh, when I came here, I just la backstage I met my friend Carl Townsend who said that he ended up bringing books and I had no idea. So because of that, I'll be back there afterwards, I'll meet you and I'll be glad to sign it for you. Uh, but that was not planned. <laughs> so, uh, the, and if you're watching at home, you can get it everywhere and anywhere. But let's pray for a moment. Father, we just ask your blessing and your anointing and my weakness be strong in your power and have your way. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. Amen. Now I know a lot of you have heard of the Harbinger. A lot of you though have not quite known what it is. So what I'm led to do is I'm going to take the first part and tell you, give you an idea, a taste of what this is. And then I'm going to bring it to a message, a prophetic message for you and for this hour. Because what I'm here for is to bring a prophetic message. And what, what the reason is, is that we are at a prophetic time. We are at a critical time. And so in ancient times, Israel was in a critical moment and God spoke and he called to them. What the harbinger is, is a warning. It's like that shofar. It's a warning, it's a wake-up call from God. And this nation needs a wake-up call from God. The Harbinger is a mystery that lies behind what is happening from 9-11 to the collapse of the economy that is so specific. It goes back over two and a half thousand years in the Bible, but it's so specific that it gives the words that American leaders speak before they say them. It gives, it gives exact dates and hours when events happen. And it ultimately goes back to the last days of ancient Israel. When the nation was given a warning, was given actually nine harbingers or prophetic signs to warn them. And the nation rejected them. And the nation headed for destruction. Well, the scary thing, the eerie thing, the stunning thing is those same nine harbingers or prophetic warning signs that appeared in the last days of ancient Israel are now reappearing on American soil. Some have appeared in New York City. Some have appeared in this city here in Washington, D.C. Some have involved American leaders, even the President of the United States. And they touch everything and everyone, and they are coming true even since the book came out. It's been coming true. We are heading for something big. And here I'll just give you an overview or a quick taste of just some of them so we can set the stage. Israel was a nation that had been founded by God. Ancient Israel was founded for His glory, was blessed because of God. But in their blessing they turned away from God. And they started calling what was evil good and what was good evil. And they started promoting immorality. And they started driving God out of their government, out of their lives, out of their school, out of everything. And then they started offering up their children on the altars of Baal and Moloch. And God warned them and sent prophets to them and sent warning signs to them. And finally he allowed something to happen. He allowed the nation to be shaken. He allowed an enemy to make a strike on the land. It was a, a temporary strike. It was a shake-up call. It was a warning. And he was to wake them up and call them back so they wouldn't be destroyed. He allowed an enemy to make a strike, but the nation, instead of coming back to God, they defied God. They responded with defiance. They made a vow. and They said, God, you're not going to humble us. 
We're not going to come back to you. And Isaiah records the vow. It says, it's in Isaiah 9:10, which is the key to the harbingers. They said, the bricks have fallen in this attack, but we will, we will rebuild with stronger big stones. And it said, the, the sycamore trees have been cut down in the attack, but we will plant cedars in their place. In other words, they're telling God, you are not going to humble us. We're not turning back to you. We're going to come back stronger than before and keep on driving you out of our lives. And because of this, then the harbingers or the signs of warning appear and they reject them and they end up being destroyed in 722 BC. Now, what does it have to do with us? Well, there's another nation in this world, one other nation that was also founded on the Word of God. And that nation is called America. It was founded on God's Word. It was founded for His glory. It was founded for His purposes. America. It was actually founded by the Puritans to be another Israel. In their eyes, they wanted to be a glory to God. And, and they, they, they gave words. The Puritans said, if we follow God, we'll be the most blessed nation on earth. It happened. But they said, if we turn away from God, then the same judgments that came on Israel will come upon us. Well, America, we have been the most blessed nation. A city on a hill, that's what we were to be. But in our blessings, we have turned from God, and we all know it. This nation, this culture has been turning from God. And so the, what's happened, we have done the same thing that ancient Israel did. We have started, we have driven God out of our government, out of our, out of our school system, out of our courts, out of everything. And then what we did is then we started calling what was evil good, and what is good evil. And we started promoting immorality across the world. And then he said, well, they, well, Israel offered up their children. On, how can you compare that to America? Well, Israel offered up thousands of children on the altars. We have offered up millions of children. And God says, you speak to me, but your hands are covered with blood. You know, and so what happens is, so he called, so God calls, and finally he allows exactly what happened to Israel to happen to America. He allows a shaking to happen. It's a classic biblical sign, the first step, which means years before the judgment comes, there is a shaking of that nation to call it back. There's an allowance for an enemy to make a strike on the land. The hedge of protection is removed. Well, that happened to America on 9-11. It was a wake-up call. It was a shaking, and people started flocking to churches. And we thought there was going to be revival. It lasted for about three weeks. There was no revival. Why? Because for revival, you must have repentance. Without repentance, there's no revival. And so what happened is we started doing the same thing that ancient Israel did. That we started following this exact mystery, the same thing that happened 2,000 or two and a half thousand years ago, we started doing. We started, the, the leaders started proclaiming the same things that the ancient leaders did. And the harbingers started appearing. And I, we don't have time to go into it, I'll just mention a few of them, one of them. It all goes according to the vow of, uh, that Isaiah recorded. They said, the bricks have fallen, we will rebuild with hewn stone. Well, the ancient Israelites, they went up to the mountains of Israel. They quarried out these massive rectangular blocks of stone. They brought it back to the ground of destruction. And they said, we're going to build higher and bigger and stronger than before. Well, the stone that they did in Isaiah, in Hebrew, it's called the Gazit stone. It's a massive rectangular block of stone. Well, this was their sign of defiance. Well, after 9-11, the people of New York went up to the mountains of New York. They gathered, a, they chiseled out a massive rectangular block of stone. It was a biblical Gazit stone. They brought it back to the ground where the destruction came to New York City, ground zero. And they had a ceremony around the stone. The, the leaders started vowing vows of defiance over the stone. They had no idea they were reenacting the ancient drama of judgment. One of the harbingers in the book is called the Six Harbingers, the Sign of the Sycamore. And this is a biblical sign of national warning of judgment. The striking down of the sycamore tree. The, the people of Israel said the sycamores have fallen in that attack. What does it do with America? For if this appears in America, you know God is warning. On the day of 9-11, when the last tower came down, it sent forth a shockwave. And the shockwave struck an object. The object was a tree at ground zero. And what was the tree? The tree was the sycamore tree. It was struck down the sign of biblical judgment at ground zero. And nobody, they, they put it on display. They thought it was a good thing. They had no idea what they were dealing with. The warning of God said to Israel, like this tree, I'll uproot, I planted you. 
And if you turn away from me, I will, you'll be uprooted. That's the warning. And then in Isaiah, the people said, the bricks have fallen, said the, the sycamore has been struck down, but we will plant a stronger tree, a cedar, in the place where the sycamore stood. So, so there's another act of defiance. The people of Israel said, we're going to take a stronger tree. We're going to take a cedar. We're going to put it right where the sycamore stood, and we're going to show you, God, that we're coming back stronger than ever against you. Well, what happens after 9-11? What happens is after that tree was struck down, two years later, a tree appears in the sky at the corner of Ground Zero. It's being lowered down to the exact spot where the sycamore was struck down, just like Israel did. And they did the exact same thing. They put the tree right where the sycamore was struck down, just exactly what Isaiah says that Israel did, a sign of divides. They had a ceremony around that tree. They called the tree of hope. They said, we can't be conquered. And this, tree, this new tree is going to represent us. Well, in Hebrew, the word for cedar is the Erez tree. And so it means a, a pine, a spruce, a, a cedar tree. Well, what was the tree that they planted in place of the sycamore? It was a biblical Erez tree, the exact same tree that was done two, two and a half thousand years ago that was part of their destruction. But it gets even more eerie because one of the harbingers, the ninth harbinger in the book, is that, that the leaders of ancient Israel actually pronounced this vow of defiance that Isaiah records in Isaiah 9:10, And that leads the nation to judgment. Well, for this to come true, an American leader would have to actually pronounce the vow of judgment, which would be pronouncing judgment on America, this defiant vow. Well, what American leader in the right mind is going to do that? Well, on the day after 9-11, right here in this city, in the Capitol Hill, the government gathered to give its response to the tragedy. And they got up to the, to the one man who was in charge of doing that was the Senate Majority Leader. He got up to the podium on Capitol Hill right here, and he gives America's response. And he says, it's Tom Daschle, the Senate Majority Leader. He gets up and he says, there's a word, there is a passage in Isaiah that speaks to us now. And then out of his mouth, he utters the ancient vow of judgment. He says, the bricks have fallen. But we will rebuild with dressed stone. And then he speaks about the tree. He, he doesn't know what he's saying. Out of 30,000 verses, he chooses the one that pronounces judgment on the nation. And it actually, it actually identifies America in defiance of God. And he speaks about the tree being struck down. He doesn't even know there's an actual tree that's just being discovered, the sycamore, that day. He speaks about replacing the one tree with the other. He doesn't know what's going to happen two years later. He speaks about putting up that stone. He doesn't know that's going to happen three years later. At the end of his speech, this is in the entire Congress heard it. It's in the annals of Congress that America's response was the actual vow that led Israel and its leaders to judgment. And he, he, he says at the end of his speech, that is what we will do. In other words, we're going to follow Isaiah 9-10. We're going to follow what they did. And, and so what's happened since 9-11? We have, this nation has not grown closer to God. I don't think anybody thinks that. This nation has grown farther from God, much farther from God. And so what is happening? And so the, the mystery in the harbinger is that if the nation doesn't listen to the first warning, there's going to, or a first shaking, there's going to come a second shaking. Well, a second shaking comes a number of years later when the, it's not buildings, it's the entire American economy, it collapses. Wall Street collapses. We call it the Great Recession. Collapse. But there's a whole stream of mysteries behind it that have to do with the Bible, some of which give the exact dates of when that happened. Now, we don't have time to go into it, but I'll mention one. One is called the mystery of the Shemitah. The Shemitah is this. Every seven years, there was a Sabbath year. The, the nation of Israel would rest, no sowing, no reaping. But on the last day of that year, something interesting would happen. On the last day of the Shemitah Sabbath year, all debts are wiped away, all credits wiped away, all the financial accounts are wiped away. And it was supposed to be a blessing. But as Israel turned away from God, what was to be a blessing ended up coming back at them now as judgment. And so what, what the, the thing about the Shemitah is this, that if it's a sign, it becomes a sign of judgment on a nation that is driving God out of its life. Well, the key of this is this seven-year cycle. Every seven years was a Sabbath year Shemitah. Well, what does it have to do with us? Well, the first shaking of America, 9-11, was 2001. 
The second shaking, the collapse of the economy, was 2008. That's a seven-year cycle. It ha when did it collapse? Happened in the month of September 2008. That's seven years to the month of 9-11. When exactly happened the second week of September? That's seven years to the week of 9-11. In fact, when America was commemorating 9-11 on Wall Street, the second shaking was being set in motion. And it, you, it gets even more amazing because when it reaches the peak day, you, they, they gather in the New York Stock Exchange and they, they go to ring the bell, but the bell refuses to ring. Even, even Wall Street took it as an omen. And that day comes the greatest collapse in American history, period. It wipe out. Everything is wiped out more than any other day in history. When did the greatest collapse, the greatest wiping out of financial accounts happen in America? It happened on the biblical appointed day of the Shemitah. On the exact day that's appointed to wipe out financial accounts of a nation that is driving God out of its life. And if you go back, because it's a seven-year mystery, go back seven years from the greatest crash in American history, the Wall, Wall Street history. Go back seven years, and you come back to 2001, you have 9-11, but you have the other greatest crash in American history. That other greatest crash happens that same time. It happens, it happens like seven years within two weeks, but on the Hebrew calendar, it's not seven years within two weeks. The other greatest collapse in American history took place on the exact same biblical day that is appointed in the Bible as a sign of a nation that is defying God, that strikes the financial realm. And the mystery in this word Shemitah, this Hebrew word, it means to either let go, release, or collapse. And the warning is, or the message is, that all of America's blessings come from God. And if you cannot drive out God and defy God and expect those blessings to remain. And so the warning is if we do, those blessings will go. Now I'm just going to share one more and then I'm going to bring it to you. But one more harbinger of the book, and that is this. It is called the mystery ground in the book, and it's this. It's that when the judgment came to Israel thousands of years ago, it returned, the destruction returned to the same ground on which the nation had been dedicated to God at the beginning. It was the Temple Mount where, where they were dedicated in prayer. Well, God was saying when, when that destruction returned to the Temple Mount, God was saying, you have fallen, Israel. And so the very place, the, 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 very, the very exact ground where the nation was dedicated to God becomes the ground of judgment. What does it have to do with America? Well, America, on its very first day as a fully formed nation, wasn't 1776, it was 1789 when George Washington put his hand on the Bible and he, gave, he took the oath and then he gave a prophetic word. He gave a warning of what would happen if America ever turned away from God. And that, that warning is coming true today. It's actually happening right now as we watch America turn and we watch the warning. We watch what's happening. Well, he, he then, the entire government on the first day, Washington, all the government, the cabinet, the Senate, the House, the very first government with a president, they go to perform the first act of the United States government with a president. What was the act? Wasn't to pass a bill, wasn't to, to do legislation. It, the first act of the American government was to pray to God and to dedicate America to God. If we can find out where they did that, We'll have a mystery. That's the mystery ground. That's the consecration ground of the first day. Where was it? It was in the capital city. But the capital city that day wasn't Washington, D.C. The capital city was New York City. Where? It was the lower part of the city. Where exactly did they dedicate America to God? America was dedicated to God on its first day at a specific ground. Its, its consecration ground of America is ground zero. America was consecrated there, the ancient mystery that the warning comes back to the same ground. And on that day, a shockwave goes forth from ground zero, and it strikes another place. It strikes Federal Hall where Washington gave the warning of what would happen if we ever turned away from God. It puts a crack in the foundation. But all around ground zero, all the buildings are ruined or destroyed except one is preserved. Which building? The little stone chapel where they dedicated America to God. It was the only place that was protected. And why was it protected? They said it was because there was an object that absorbed all the force of 9-11 and shielded it. What was the object? It was, it was the sixth harbinger. It was the sycamore tree. And so the message of the harbingers and the message of the harbinger is not to condemn America to judgment. It's to wake America from judgment. That is the point. 
That is the point that the Lord has. See, what's happening in America, you know, is not, is not separate from what's happening to what's happened to God's church, His people. See, if, if the church in America had been the light to America it was supposed to be, it could never get as dark as it's been. If the church had been the salt to America as it was to be, it could never have gotten as rotten as it's been. God is calling. And God is calling because the hour is critical. I believe a great shaking is coming to this nation and the world. A great shaking that will involve the collapse of the financial realm, the economic realm. It will affect everyone. It won't just be economic or financial. And yet people say, oh, that's, that's scary. Well, you know, it's the opposite. Without, I believe without shaking, this nation is not coming back. It's only in shaking that we'll come back. Some of you, you know, you're asked, well, what should we do? Well, listen, you know, is there hope? Is there hope? Well, my answer is if there was, if there was no hope, there'd be no harbingers. What's the point of warning if there's no hope? God warns because there's hope. We can return. We can, we can come back. That's the whole point. You know, the, the words he gave Solomon, the answer, when Solomon prayed up on the Temple Mount, he, he went back and it says, God spoke to him in the night and God said, Solomon. He, you know, because Solomon said, what happens if the nation turns away from you? God said this, Solomon, here's the answer. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their evil ways, I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin and I will heal their land. If Here's the key, the answer, the answer to America is not the Supreme Court, not the White House, not the Capitol, not Wall Street. The answer is Jesus, the Messiah, Yeshua, the light of the world, the hope of America, the hope of this nation is only Him and will only be Him. And then he said, then he says, well, if my people, well, that's the other part, my people, if we will humble ourselves, if we will pray, if we will seek his face and turn from our evil ways, then I will hear from heaven. We, you know, if you ask, if you're saying, well, maybe you're, not, you don't, maybe you're not born again when you're watching this. Maybe not. Well, you say, well, how can I be safe if we're in days of judgment? How can I be safe? Well, the, here's a cool thing. In Hebrew, the word for safety is Yeshua. Yeshua is the name of Jesus. So they, you want to be safe? Get in him. Outside of him, there's no safety. Inside of him, there's no fear. Concerning, I believe we are at this very great critical point concerning America and world history. And that what was in the book, what's in the Harbinger has been coming true continuously to the fact that my wife, she said, look, did you see what happened? I didn't believe her and I wrote the book. It's coming true. What will you do in such a time? Here it is. If you've ever thought of getting your life right, don't say tomorrow anymore. The time is late. Get it right now. Today is the time to get it right. If there's anything in your life that has no place in your life of a saint of God, rule it out now. Don't wait till tomorrow. God called, you know, the priest could not bring others to salvation until he got right with God. You are the priest of God. God has called you, us here in Washington, D.C., to have a part in bringing this nation to him. We have to get right. You know, and if there's anything that's not in your life that you know it should be in your life, now is the time to get it into your life. God is calling. Don't say tomorrow. Now is the time. If the night is growing darker, the lights must get brighter. If the, if the bad is getting worse, it's time for the good to get great. God will bless the light. See, when you do the will of God, you're like that candle, not in the noontime. You're the candle at night that lights up the world. He is not finished. God is never finished, but he's looking, who can I send? Who can I use? We must either shine in revival or shine in persecution, but we have to shine either way. It is time to get right. The, what days are these? These are the days of Ezekiel, when God called the watchmen and the watchwomen to boldly sound the trumpet. And don't be ashamed and don't be afraid, but shout God's word and be strong for God. You're the watchman. The watchman can't get, can't get in, entangled with the world. You got to stay on that tower. You got to stay on the, uh, with God's presence. You got to stay above this world to be able to proclaim to this world. These are the days of Elijah when the people of God have to hold true no matter what and challenge the world around and say, listen, if Baal is God, serve him and go to hell. But if the Lord is God, serve him and go to be blessed today. These are the days of Elijah, and we must become the Elijahs of the day. But to fulfill that calling, we have to take up that mantle to be bold, to be all out for him. Some important things to remember for the days to come. 
Whatever's not grounded in God is going to be shaken, so ground yourself in God. Be more the more plugged into God, that's going to keep you in days of shaking. And be, be more plugged into the Word of God and pray for this nation, determine no matter what happens, I am going to, me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. You stand for God, God will stand for you. Ready yourself to be strong. No matter what the majority say, you, are, you and God are the majority. You have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The world behind you, the cross before you, no turning back. Though none go with you, still you will follow, no turning back, no turning back. Remember that none of these things, no matter what happens, even all hell cannot stop the will of God. These are the times that produce the greatest believers. These are times for greatness. Always live on the offensive, never live on the defensive. Impact the world because greater is he who is in you than he who is in this world. Who said, I am the one, as Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of God. It's the power of God for everyone who believes for salvation to the Jew and the Gentile. You want prophecy times? You've got it now. You want the days of Elijah? You've got it. You want the book of Acts? You've got it. You want biblical times? You've got it. There's a mystery that the age will end the way it began. With Israel was there in the world, it's back in the world. You had Jewish believers then, you've got Jewish believers now. You had Jew and Gentile together, you've got it now. And you had, person, you, had, you had an ungodly culture, but you had the people of God as the lights of the world blazing forth. It's time, therefore, that we become like the book of Acts. It's time to live as they lived, to believe as they believed, to stand as they stood, and overcome as they overcame this world. Because God, it says, the eyes of the Lord are searching the entire earth, looking for the one whose heart is completely his. He'll lift that one up. You be that one. You be that people. And God will do it. Don't fear the days ahead. Remember some, you know, if you want revival, remember something. You cannot force revival on a person. There's only one revival you can guarantee, your own. If we want revival, let's live in revival. If we want America revived, let's walk in revival. For thus says the Lord, prepare the way, make straight a path. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain be cast down. Let the crooked way become straight. Let a highway be for the Lord. The Lord says in, his, in the language of God, Kumi ori kiva orech, arise and shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And remember one last thing. Remember what kingdom you are of. You are of, if you are born again, you are of the commonwealth of Israel. And remember Israel. The enemy wanted Israel off the earth for 4,000 years. They've been outnumbered. They've been outmanned. They've been outweaponed. The pharaohs tried to stamp them out. Assyria tried to wipe them out. Babylon tried to crush them. Rome tried to destroy them. Hitler tried to wipe them off the earth. The Soviet Union tried to oppress them and all the force of hell have tried to get them off this planet. But, but, the pharaohs are gone. Assyria has crumbled. Babylon has fallen. Rome is no more. The Third Reich is gone. The Soviet Union has fallen, fallen, fallen. But the nation of Israel lives because the God of Israel lives, because the Messiah of Israel lives, the people of Israel live, and you are the people of God, and you will live, and you will prevail. Go all out for God, and God will do it. It's time to get strong, time to get radical, time to be great in God, and God will bless you in the name of Yahweh. Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus, the Messiah, uh, the light of the world, the glory of Israel, and the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you. Hallelujah. God of Israel, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we praise you from Washington, D.C. We praise you tonight. You are God. You are awesome. And we praise you that we are on the winning side with you, Lord. We praise you. Now, everybody, listen, let's do something to prophetic. Let's turn, the White House is that way. Let's turn that way. And the Capitol's that way. Lift up your hands to the White Let's pray for God's power. And let's pray for God's hand. And let's pray for that whatever it takes on this land, God will bring revival. Whatever it takes, let the powers of hell be shaken and let the kingdom of God arise. This is what my fathers did in the temple. Let's proclaim it today. 
Father, we proclaim together that you are God. You are King of this earth. You are Lord of America. And there is only one name given under heaven and in heaven that by which we must be saved. It is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. We proclaim, Lord, your will on this capital. We, Lord, we, we pronounce, Lord, have your way on this land, starting with this capital. Have your way. Lord, whatever it takes to bring this nation, to bring people to you, let it be done. Let it happen, Lord. Be lifted up. Let your name be lifted up. Let your, Lord, let your will be done in America. Lord, we need you. Without you, we've got no hope. But with you, we've got all hope. Lord, let the name of Jesus, Yeshua, be lifted up once again in this nation, even in this, in this place. Oh, Lord, let it be so. And let's, when you hear the sound of the shofar, the power of God, what it represents, give a shout to the Lord that the, the walls of hell will crumble.